Okay, so most of the components for the new living room computer that I needed have arrived. Uh, I've got the, uh, the back plate for the system right there, and this is the motherboard. So the back plate will go underneath the motherboard. That's it there. And also, here's the cooler. You get all kinds of packing when you buy from eBay sellers. That one did the job. Okay, that's the cooler. And let's see. Let's get the components we've already got. Oh, the CPU. And we need RAM, which I've got in here. there and we need a power supply I've got new power supplies in this box all right large assess 550 watt right Let's get the motherboard out. Looks like what we ordered. So this is a motherboard for an Optiplex 9010 small form factor system. I'm just going to give it a once over for obvious broken stuff slash burned spots. That looks good. All right, let's go ahead and you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get a motherboard box. This is a box that a motherboard would come new in. I'm gonna set the system on that. Makes it a little bit easier to work with. Set the system like that. All right, let's go ahead and uh, put the uh, the CPU in. Lifting up on the retention arm, and there you go. There's the socket. And when you put it, uh, when you're putting a CPU socket in on Intel CPUs, there's a arrow on the socket along with an arrow on the motherboard that you line up. There's also two notches, one there and one there on the CPU that line up with uh, little bits of plastic on either side of the socket. Okay, that's in. Lower the load plate and make sure that it goes under this shoulder screw. And then I will lower the arm and clip it into place. And that makes the cover pop off. Okay. Next up, let's do the, uh, the back plate. This back plate looks like it comes with... Um, some adhesive, and if you peel this off, so it will stick to the, the back of the motherboard. Let's go ahead and turn it over and take a look. The back of the motherboard has got this little jut out there that looks like it goes like that. Let's see if that fits. Yeah. Feels right, and if I turn it over, I should be able to see, yeah, the screw holes in the, uh, the back plate are poking through. So let's go ahead and turn that over. And I will take off the adhesive. Strips, covers, adhesive is still on there. Um, set it into place and give it a little push. And that should keep the 
the back plate from falling out as I attach the cooler. So the cooler, this is the back of the system going this way to the left. Um, the cooler should fit onto the motherboard and screw in with these four screws into the holes in the back plate. And that's going to be covering up this section of the motherboard, but there's nothing there we, uh, we need access to. Um, so that's looking good. I need to clean off the thermal compound that was left on here from when it was taken out of the system. And it came with... Um, and I need to apply new thermal compound. I'm just gonna... scrape it off. lot on there. Whenever you're doing this you basically just want to get the vast majority of it off. You don't necessarily have to get absolutely everything but the more you get off of old thermal compound the better the new thermal compound will be able to uh, transfer the heat from the processor to the cooler. If you want to be more thorough about it, what you can do is use some uh, isopropyl alcohol, 99% uh, or higher isopropyl alcohol, to uh, really get it clean. Okay, we're getting just a little bit of residue now. I'm actually going to go ahead and put a little bit of alcohol on the paper towel. You don't need much. Okay. And any residual residual um, alcohol that you don't get off with this will evaporate in you know fifteen or twenty seconds. So, all right, that is going to be good enough. Oh, you know what? Let's give a give the CPU a, a once over as well. Looks like it had a tiny bit left over. Okay. So I'm going to put a pea-sized amount on the processor right in the middle. to put the cooler right over the four screw holes in the riser. And on this what you want to do is get all four of the, uh, the screws started in the holes before you go back and tighten them down. And you want to do it generally um, evenly. So as the uh, the cooler gets tightened down, it's spreading out that thermal compound across the uh, the whole of the CPU. What I do is I count the number of turns on each uh, each screw and make them all pretty much the same uh, amount that they're being lowered as I go around. That's just about tight. That's about tight. Okay, that's tight. That's tight. Tight. And tight. 
All right, so cooler's on. It looks like it's, if I look down, I don't know if y'all can see this. Let me see if I can get the angle right. You can see it's right on top of the processor. There's doesn't appear to be a gap. And let's see, you need to plug in its fan. And it's a five pin fan. It's a kind of a, it's not the typical uh, CPU uh, cooling fan connector. So it just goes like that. And to take it out, there's a little thing that you hold down in on as you pull up, but that will be good. Yeah. All right. Um, RAM. Got a bin of RAM here. Most of this is older stuff like DDR2, but I do have some DDR3. Um, so I've got a Patriot 8 gigabyte. There's sometimes issues with uh, Patriot RAM in Dell computers, so I'd kind of prefer not to use that. It might be okay, but there uh, there are known issues between those two manufacturers. Um, I think I had, yeah, a couple of RAM sticks out here. This is HyperX, and it's DDR3 RAM. Um, Looks like it's got 1600 in the model name. And it says at the very end of the model name, it's 8GX instead of GB, kit of two. I'm thinking this is two four gigabyte sticks. Okay, so according to uh, the motherboard manual I read in the last video as I was doing the research, um, this motherboard wants the... Uh, first two sticks of RAM to go into the black connectors. So I'm going to open up its locking mechanism. And as you're putting RAM in, um, there's a notch in the RAM that goes into a little bit of plastic on the slot. You basically put it into the guides, push down evenly on both sides until it snaps, and the retention clips come up. Same thing for the second stick of RAM. Okay. If you don't hear it click and these don't come up, you didn't push uh, push hard enough. All right. So set my bin of RAM over, and don't need the CPU cover. Right. Need to get power. This is a Logisys power supply. I, uh, I typically use these in standard desktop computers. It's a decent power supply, not overly expensive, but good quality. So I need to plug in the 24 pin power cable right there. And there's also, should be a four or an eight in here. Okay, so it's got a four or eight pin connector that you can disengage. So you can have just four. Um, only one side will fit here. And I guessed correctly. All these connectors, are keyed so they can only go in one way. You can't put them in wrong. And if they're, they're not fitting, you're not doing something right. Or you need to get a better view of it because it might just be slightly out of alignment what you're trying to do. So yeah. Uh, there we go. And to take those out, there's a little tab here that you press in on as you pull up on both connectors. All right, um, let me see, bring this over to the other side. I 
I haven't purchased the video card I'm going to be using with the system because I wanted to make sure that the system basically functioned before I went and spent uh, $110 or $120 for the, the video card. So I'm just going to grab one that I can use to test the system. Uh, this is a NVIDIA GT620. I'm going to put it into the bottom slot. So that's just line it up, push straight down until it snaps. And it looks like on this motherboard, when it, to take it out, you have to you know, see this here behind the, uh, the other side of the video card. You have to lift this up as you pull up on the card in order to uh, to be able to to get it out and. This right here is one of the reasons I put the motherboard onto the, the motherboard box. If you look, if this motherboard was laying on the table, I wouldn't have been able to push that video card in because of its uh, retention bracket. So what that does is it raises the motherboard off the, uh, the table and allows that to go in. Um, so another component I don't have is the power button. Um, what I'm going to do is use a screwdriver to jump a couple of pins together on the motherboard in order to activate its power button or its power function. Let's put it that way. So I need that. I need a power cord going over to the power supply. Oh. <laughs> it came on. All right, um, I need to turn the TV on. So the next nine minutes of this video is basically me trying to figure out why the computer isn't giving me video. I'm leaving this section in the video just because it is some pretty legit no video troubleshooting steps that uh, very well can work in a lot of situations to get the computer up and running. If you just want to see what turned out to be the cause, go ahead and skip to about 26 minutes and 38 seconds into the video. Not getting the signal. Am I wrong about the HDMI number? Could be. Nope. HDMI 2. So I'm not getting video on the screen. Basically, I'm getting no signal. power switch. So yeah, that uh, if that's the noise it's going to be making, that's not going to work. Let's see, where is the power switch on this computer? There it is. So right there it's marked power switch and it's five pins. Let's give it power again, see what happens. And it came right back on. Although the cooler is quieter. Oh, now it's noisy. And still, uh, still nothing on the monitor. Okay, let's turn it off. And I'm going to move the video card. Up to the blue slot and see if that makes a difference. on. I don't like that it's turning on when I just give it power. I should really have to press a power button. I'm right, basically getting the same noise and nothing on the monitor. Alright, back off. Does this thing have a CMOS clearing function? Jumper. A 
password switch. So there's a jumpy here on password. It says PSWD, and to me that means password. And there's a jumper on it. Okay, here's a RT reset. I think that's a CMOS reset. What I'm doing is trying to reset the BIOS. So that's just plugging, and that's just connecting those two pins together briefly to get that done. I'm going to put this back on PSWD. I'm not sure if that needs to be there or not. All right, back on. Still nothing on the screen. Hmm. Let's turn that back off. I'm going to take the video card out and see if I get video from the uh, internal uh, graphics. There's a VGA port on the back of the motherboard. I'm just going to borrow this VGA cable from my diagnostic computer. Change the input on the TV to VGA and turn her back on. Still no video. Let's take the RAM out. And this has a PC speaker right there, so without the RAM in, I'm thinking it'll at least beep at me, um, saying, hey, there's no RAM, what are you doing? See if that functions. So I'm not expecting to get video here, but I would think that it should be beeping at me. And I got no beeps. It's not a good sign. Ah, uh, let's see. What else? Um... Let's take off that PSWD jumper. Same thing. See, was I thinking wrong? Or was I remembering wrong about the RAM? That it wanted in the white? The white slots first? Let's give that a try. And just try one. The computer should be able to boot up and work with one stick of RAM. <coughs> I still got nothing on the nothing on the screen. All right, let's try some different RAM. Okay, so I've got. 
one gigabyte stick and another one gigabyte stick. Let's try these. <coughs> I think it was white first. So far, this is a whole lot of not good. Power supply is brand new. It's most likely fine. Thing is, I've got uh, I've got some new components here that I've never tested before because I didn't have a system to test them in. Um, so it could be just an issue with the motherboard. Maybe broke. It could be the CPU failed. Let me go take a look at the service manual. Right. So I got it working. Um, I've got the computer off right now, uh, so I can try and show you um, what the issue turned out to be. Let me just lift the system up and kind of turn it and get my head in here, see if I can get a view of it on the camera. That pretty well shows it. So what had happened is when I tightened down the cooler, I tightened it down too much, which put a bend in the motherboard, and that caused the uh, the no video situation when I turned the computer on. So you can kind of see it right there. The screws are going into the back plate, but they're not tightened down all the way, and they don't need to be. So they really only need to be slightly tightened down in order to secure the cooler to the motherboard. I try and move it around, it's it doesn't. And um, let me go ahead and turn the computer on. So I'm going to use a screwdriver to reach in here and jump the two pins that are the power switch. Turn on the, the screen. And the cooler is quieter, but um, it's still a little bit too loud. So on the screen, I'm getting some messages saying that there's no power button cable and no front I.O. cable. And do I want to press F1 to continue, F2 to go into setup, or F5 to go to diagnostics? I'm going to press F1 on the keyboard. And it's going to go into, uh, into Windows 10. It boots up very quickly. So after I got it up and running, I connected up a solid state drive and installed Windows 10 Professional just as a, uh, a test environment. The two HyperX sticks did turn out to be two 4 gigabyte sticks. Tilt the camera up here. And I can check that by right clicking on the start button, going to system. And there's eight gigabytes. So it's recognized in the Core i5. 4370, uh, it's running at 3.2 gigahertz. And last evening I downloaded IDA64 Extreme. Uh, you can get this for free at CNET.com. If you do a search on Google for AIDA64, you'll find it. It's a trial version, it, right, it lasts for 30 days. What this lets you do is run diagnostics and get information on the system. I'm going to go to IDA64 CPU ID. So there it is showing the CPU again. Uh, the CPU clock right now is at 1600 megahertz because the computer isn't doing anything. Um, it's basically idle. If I go to system stability test here in IDA64, I can hit start on it and it's going to stress test the CPU, the FPU, the cache, and the system memory. Basically what's in the CPU and the system memory it's going to put under a, a load. Uh, CPU usage shot up to 100% and the temperatures 
for the CPU cores and the RAM. It also shows the, um, the temperature on the motherboard, that's the 27 down here. CPU temps are going up to around the mid-50s. And I ran this for a couple of hours last night, and they pretty much stayed there. The, uh, the cooler does get um, louder as the, uh, the CPU gets hot. So just as a general system, this is not too loud, but since I'm wanting this to, uh, to go behind my TV, I really need it to be quieter. The power supply I don't think is making too much noise, but this is the cooler. I contacted the seller and let them know, and they're sending out a uh, replacement for free, and they asked me just to recycle this one. But I thought, since uh, I've got this one, I might try opening it up, and there's a possibility I could lubricate the fan in it and make it quieter. It's certainly worth a shot. And right now I don't have a video card in the computer. It's running off the internal graphics just through a VGA cable. And um, I fired up... Let me go ahead and stop this uh, stability test. Let me fire up a video here. I think I went to Ninja's stream last night. Let's go to History. Okay, let me jump to where he's playing a game and make it full screen. So this is a 1080p um, stream, and it's running at 1080p on this monitor. And it's uh, it's smooth. I don't have uh, I don't see any issues with it. Let's get the uh, the system shut down. Close down Chrome and turn the computer off. I'd like to see if I can do anything about this uh, this current fan. I know I've got a replacement coming from the uh, from the seller that hopefully will be quieter, but I'm curious about this fan. If you have a fan like this, uh, what can you do to make it quieter? If there's a way to get to the bearings in the fan with some lubrication, that would be a way to make it quieter. Certainly worth a shot. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing in on the little clip on the fan as I pull up. It's being a bit of a pain. There we go, okay. So I was pressing here and it feels like I needed to actually kind of come down and press more at the, the bottom part of it to get it to come out. All right, let's power off the, the main power switch. I'm just going to skip through this at 10 times speed. Um, I was thinking I needed to take the fan apart in order to lubricate it, and it turns out that's not the case. Right about here, I'll be realizing that all I needed to do was move a sticker out of the way. Okay, so oil needs to go in there to make this thing spin as smoothly and as quietly as possible. And I use 3-in-1 oil for this sort of thing. There's other kinds of grease that people recommend. I find that 3-in-1 oil does a good job. You don't need much either. Um, just one, two, maybe three drops. Give the fan a little bit of a manual spin. Typically, whenever you open up one of these, there'll be a, a rubber kind of a plug. That's there to, to seal it up and make it so that the grease doesn't come out. There isn't one here. It looks like it's just a sticker, so I'm going to put that right back down. Let's see. Fan approximately the right spot, and then this bracket goes over and also holds it down. 
screws are very similar. Looks like two of them are shorter. I think these guys went there and there. I'm definitely jittery. I need to go get something to eat. What I'm doing is I'm getting them all three screws started in the holes and then I'll go back and tighten them down. So shaky. Making bird noises, somebody's texting me. By the way, my phone is strapped to my head. I don't have anything reflective in here at the moment. It's kind of comical. So this video uh, and the last one are the first to be shot in 4K. I had been shooting all the videos on my um, Galaxy S5 phone which technically does 4K, but it's very, very choppy video. Uh, the Galaxy S9 Plus I just got, it looks like the video is coming out smoothly. And at 4K, you should all be able to see it in more detail. The color's better. I mean, it's, it's just uh, remarkably better. All right, so back together. All right, let's give it primary power back and it's still doing that it's coming on whenever I give it power back which according to the BIOS it shouldn't I'm gonna go to F2 to get into the BIOS this is unrelated to the the sound the fan is making but I think it's under power management AC recovery If the computer loses power and it's given the power back with it set to power off where it is, system stays off after AC power is restored. It's not doing that. It's coming on as soon as you give it power back, which is just weird. Um, I'm thinking maybe there's a BIOS update that can make that not happen. Okay, so the noise the fan is making seems about the same to me. It might be a little bit quieter. But I think it's still too noisy. I'm pressing F1 to get it to go past those error messages that boot about the uh, the power button and the the front uh, I/O. Might be a hair quieter. So if the uh, replacement the uh, the eBay seller sending me is not quieter than this, not acceptably uh, quiet, what I'll do is look for a uh, a different cooler. For the system, that'll be quieter. So you tilt up the camera here. So Windows 10, it found drivers for all of the hardware in the computer. I didn't have to do anything. If I right click on start and go to device manager, it found drivers for everything. Um, I'm curious about a BIOS upgrade though. Possible BIOS upgrade that might improve things. So if I do a search on the start menu for MS Info 32, I get system information. And the BIOS version is version A08 from back in 2012. Let's do a search on Google for Optiplex. I think this is actually going to be Bing, but it'll work. 10. 90 SFF BIOS. All right, so brought up a 790. 
Let's try instead of BIOS, let's do just a more generic search for drivers. And it's still bringing up 790 stuff. It may be the same motherboard, but let's go to Google and do that same search. There we go. 1090 drivers and downloads. Moments later. Okay, let's go even more Google because Edge is not responding well. Open up Chrome, do that same search. More moments later. It says waiting for Dell.com. The search seems to be coming up. Maybe Dell's just having an issue at the moment. Let's try to go in the back way. Um, Support.dell.com. Does not work. Let's try CNN. That worked. I guess Stell's website's just having an issue at the moment. Yep, server error. Right, well, I'm gonna go get something to eat. Hopefully they've got it fixed by the time I get back. Now I'm back, food was good. Let's try a refresh on that. All right, so we're looking for a BIOS. Version 29, okay. Yeah, that's quite a bit newer. Um, download that. Let's go to the full driver details. So it says it added some CPU microcode. They never tell you everything that a BIOS update does. I imagine they've made tons of uh, changes over the years. Sometimes it's not a good idea to go from a really old BIOS to a new BIOS. That's a huge jump. Let me look for other versions. Got an A15 that Mike could go to. Let's do that. I'll download the A15 version. And we'll do it first. All right, so I'm just going to tell it to run. There it goes. I'm closing down some programs. Okay, update the BIOS and firmware. Don't turn off the power. So basically this, you just want to uh, not touch it after you uh, start the process. Depending on the computer, it will either do it all in Windows and reboot. Um, some computers will restart and do it before Windows loads up again. It looks like this one's restarting to get it done. All right, it's giving me a percentage. So at this point, you don't want to turn the computer off. If it sits there for 15 or 20 minutes, that may just be what it's supposed to be doing. You don't want to turn the computer off. On newer systems, um, the exact time frame varies. There's, um, there's ways to, if there is a failed flash of a BIOS, to recover it. It's usually done by putting the flash file onto a USB flash drive, like a thumb drive, and um, holding down a key or two as you turn the computer on like a key, a couple of keys on the keyboard. That'll get it into BIOS flash recovery mode. It gets the, uh, the correct flash off of the thumb drive, loads it onto the computer, and uh, the computer's back up and running. Failed BIOS flashes aren't very typical. Um, they're pretty few and far between these days. One of the things it might be doing um, in these BIOS updates is changing the, um, the fan curve on the CPU fan. It could make it a little bit slower, which would make it quieter, or they may have decided that it needed to run faster, um, so it might actually make it louder. We'll, we'll find out.
and that's really dependent on dependent on the system. They may not have messed with the fan curve at all. All right. So it just turned the computer off briefly. It should come back on. There it goes. Okay, I'm gonna press F1 on the keyboard to get go past the uh, the error messages about the power button and the I/O board not being present. This computer boots up really fast. All right, so that was up to A15. Let's go back to downloads, and we'll upgrade to A29, which should be the most recent version. A15 to A29. Same procedure. Once it gets going, don't touch it. Let it do what it needs to do. All right, rebooting after the update. I'm gonna press F1 to go past the errors. I've got the power switch on the way. I think it's supposed to be here in a few days. The IO board, I might just go ahead and get, I think it's five bucks, just uh, so I don't have the error message at, uh, at restarting. All right, so that's the BIOS updated. I'm curious about something. If I turn the computer off, I'm wondering if the BIOS updates fixed that thing where if I take away power and give it back, the computer comes right back on. So it's off. I'm gonna turn the power off with the main power switch on the back here. So power's off. I'm gonna turn the power back on. And it's still coming on by itself. I was hoping maybe the uh, one of the BIOS updates would have fixed that. And that's something I can live with. I just don't particularly like it. F1. And let's let it boot back into Windows. All right, so I think I'll leave it there for now. Um, the next steps will be mounting the components to a board and then that board to the uh, to the back of the television replacing that laptop and from that laptop I'll be taking out the solid state drive and the hard drive from it along with the um, Wi-Fi adapter and using a little adapter card to plug it into one of these um, expansion slots and I'll also be getting that uh, NVIDIA GT 1030 graphics card this cooler, after I lubed the uh, the bearings, I think it is quieter, but it's got kind of a little wobbly sound to it. Maybe the uh, the cooler that the eBay seller is sending me will be quieter. That would be nice. I think that's a good end for this uh, this video. Thanks for watching.